Okay, I'll try and make this as short and sweet as possible. Okay, so here we go. Uh, today is going to be the general curve sketching lesson. So here's what you need on your assignment on the front page. You need to have all these components. Okay, so now you could basically do your whole assignment minus the lesson tomorrow, which is on slant asymptotes. Okay, slant asymptotes. Okay, so domain, uh, when we're finding domain, look for MPV. That's going to give you a, so any variables on the denominator. Intercepts, uh, do we know how to find an intercept? Right, so for y-intercept, set x equal to 0, x-intercept, set y equal to 0. Symmetry, how do we find out symmetry? How do we find out something's odd? You know, f of negative x equals negative f of x, then it's odd. And if it's odd, it's symmetrical about. Yeah. Symmetrical about the origin. Uh, there's another one. What's the other one that we test for? If f of negative x equals, equals, oops, negative, equals f of x. Then it's even, symmetrical about, what, y-axis. And then if it doesn't give you either of those, then it's neither. Not, there's no symmetry. Asymptotes. How do we find a vertical asymptote? We have one. It's right there. We're going to use the limits. Run it. Yeah, it's a rational expression, and there's a variable in the denominator. So uh, basically, check your MPVs. So then we have a vertical asymptote at x equals some number, and you're going to have to do your limits. I'll show your limits there on both sides of that number. Yes. Non-permissible value. Non-permissible value. Horizontal asymptote. Um, so we have to check for horizontal asymptote again when we have a rational expression. So here are these are rational expressions. So we know we have a horizontal asymptote when our limit as x approaches infinity gives some number. I'm going to write this one out. Check the limit as x approaches infinity if it actually approaches some number, then we say it has a horizontal asymptote. At y equals some number. Okay, slant asymptotes, uh, which we're going to study tomorrow, also happen when we have a rational expression, but specifically when the top degree is greater than the bottom by 1. This little degree symbol. Is that okay? Top degree is greater than the bottom degree by 1. 
Um, and the reason why is when we use long division, it works out to be y equals mx plus b, basically. And so we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. Then we'll have a slant asymptote. Yes. No. No, uh, if the bottom degree is, you said less than one? The top degree is greater than the bottom degree, then phi 1. Okay, so if that's the case, what would our, then it would be not a slant asymptote. As x approaches infinity, you're going to have a number over a really big number. So you'd actually approach 0. You'd have a horizontal asymptote at 0. Yeah. So that, yep. Yeah. Um, so MPVs are just whenever you have a denominator with a variable, oh. right? So whenever we have fractions. So asymptotes occur when we have a rational expression, a fraction, with a variable on the bottom, okay? So as soon as you see a fraction with a variable, like, right, then we know we have to check these, okay? Yep. Yeah, some number. So some number L. So it'd be y equals L. There you go. Some number, yep. Yeah. So then we would have a hor horizontal asymptote. If our graph, maybe two, right? As x approaches infinity, approaches that some number L. Okay, uh, what is the first derivative test going to give us? Okay, so it tells us about slope, so specifically increase, decrease, we call that. And minimum and maximum, min max value. So there's kind of a lot all in this test. We need to find when is it increasing, decreasing, and where are max mins. So we do that by finding the critical values. Where are critical values in? How do we find our critical values? Set our first derivative to zero or when our first derivative is, does not exist, the critical value. Because those are the places where our increase, decrease can change. And then we state, after we know where it's increase, decrease, we state the max min points. Wait, that's a funny looking M. And to get the point, we go back to the original equation, right? Always to get an, a point. So this guy right here, what would he be? A max or a min? This would be a max, right? You can see that, and this guy would be the min. Okay, after we finish our increase, decrease, we say increasing at, decreasing, right? We state when it's increasing, when it's decreasing, state the max min points, then we finally move on to concavity and po points of inflection. So uh, how do we find those? Second derivative, critical values of second derivative. And we set those equal to 0 or when it's undefined. I should say critical values when. Maybe not of. I don't know. I'm trying to shorten it, but. So after we've done that, we state inflection points. And where it's concave up and concave down.
So an inflection point happens when? Right, there, it's actually a change of sign here. So these would these both be inflection points? Yeah, yeah. So if it was negative plus plus, right, the plus plus is not, infle is not an inflection point. And then last, we're going to sketch the curve. So A through G each time. So you'll notice that the questions that we're going to go through are full page. Yay. Okay, so let's start with an easy example. Hmm? Not really. Nope. Not really anything new. So it's just, it's really the, what all the things you need to do to properly sketch a curve. Okay. So first step, um, so when you do your assignment, guys, can you do all of these for number one? I'm not sure if I laid it out like that. I said it on instructions. So make sure you do all these things for full marks. Okay. So let's start with A, which is domain. What would be the domain of this graph? Okay, you can either write x dr or negative infinity to infinity. It's a polynomial function. It's not a rational expression. So this is going to make step C, uh, D easy. Between uh, there be an MPV. Right? Okay, C, uh, B is symmetry. No, intercept. Intercept. Okay, so where do you want to start? Okay, X intercept. You gotta factor this puppy. What can we factor out? X and. Oh. 3x uh, to 4 minus 10x squared plus 45. So this follows uh, a quadratic type pattern. So we're going to see if we can factor this guy. Two numbers that multiply to 3 times 45 and add to 10 will be factored. So it's 135. 5 50 times 3 is 150. So 135. 135 and add to 10. Sorry. Uh, is it factorable? Hmm. Okay, guess what we have to use? Okay, the only difference would be instead of x equals, it would be x squared equals. negative b so 10 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c all over 2 a a it's non real woohoo what does that mean no x intercepts there, so the only x intercept is zero comma zero. This is non real. That was easy. Okay, so y intercept would also be zero comma zero. Very convenient. Because there's no constant in this equation, right? There's no constant, so zero zero. Okay, C, symmetry. How do we figure out symmetry? Color coding I find is helpful. No? Okay. Uh, symmetry, you're going to have to sub in f of negative x. And see if it comes out as negative f of x or f of x. So in this case, subbing in a negative x every time we see x negative 10 times negative x cubed 
plus 45 times negative x. So what happens when you fifth it or cube it? Still is negative. So we want to try and make it like the original. So how can we do that? Take out a negative. And what is this guy defined as? Negative f of x. So he is symmetrical about the origin. Odd. Means if you know this guy looks something like that, right? And this would be like it's rotated 180, so if I can create it again. Okay? Like a cubic function is odd. Cubic function, right? A basic x cubed looks like, whoop, whoop. That's odd. Oh. Okay, next guy. Now we get to do asymptotes. Which should be easy. Why is it easy? It's not a rational expression, so therefore, how many asymptotes? Will we have any asymptotes? No asymptotes. Um, so vertical, none. Oh, there goes my color coding. Uh, slant would be none, which we're going to learn more about tomorrow. Horizontal, you're welcome to figure out what it is approaches positive, negative infinity, but you don't technically have to go through all that work. You could also just say none. Um, if you want to, I'm going to write it down so we can, it might help you graph it more. When we approach positive infinity for a function, if we plug in x as positive infinity, what would our graph approach? Looking at our original function. Yeah, we actually take the first degree. The other guys almost don't even matter. It's the highest degree. So it approach positive infinity. And if I plug in negative infinity, what would the graph approach? As x approaches negative infinity. It'd be a negative. So also, so that's gonna give you an idea of what it'll look like. Do you have to do all the work? No, you could also just say none. Okay? After asymptotes, we're on to first derivative. Okay, finally we can derive. So y prime is 15x squared minus 30, uh oh, sorry. the 4, yeah, minus 30x squared plus 45. Now we can factor some stuff out, right? 15 Okay, let's try and factor. Two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to negative 2. Negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, so we need our critical... Whoa! No, that didn't work. Darn it. Kiss. Our life sucks. Whoa, sorry guys. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to punch math in the face, don't you? You do, because now what do we have to do? Can I formula? Kind of lose its, its excitement. Sorry, guys, I was a little negative, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, it's quartic. Okay, so negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. 
Minus 4 AC. Ah, guess what? Oh, that sucks. <laughs> okay, so, what does that mean for us? Well, we still want to do a test. Does it always ink? It never changes. So it's either always increasing or always decreasing. So let's find out which one it is. So on our interval test, does it matter which number we choose? Not at all. We have every option in the world because... <laughs> sure, go ahead, plug that in. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug in zero. I like zero. Okay, if I plug in zero, positive or negative? Positive. So our function is increasing when? Always. Okay, no max mins. Okay, awesome. Second derivative. So F said, did F say max min on this one up here? Okay, so uh, max slash min, how many or where? None. Okay, do you guys have room up there? Okay, second derivative, what is it? Somebody tell me, because I lost my function. Okay, fine. 15 times 4 is 60. Hmm? Academy. <laughs> okay, so 60x cubed, and then 2 minus 60x, and that's it. Okay, oh, we actually got something here, I think. Maybe we factor out 60x, I'm left with x squared minus 1. Whoa, ho, ho. Okay, finally, this guy was not very interesting. Critical values are zero plus or minus one. <laughs> okay, let's do our test, negative two. Oh, sorry, label my number line. Thank you. Negative, negative, negative two minus one is negative. Negative two plus one is negative. That'd be negative. Uh, give me a number between zero and negative one. Negative point five. So it give us first negative times negative times plus gives you a positive. Now, um, do we know what's going to be next? It has, it's symmetrical about the origin. So it's always opposite on the other side. So it's going to be here, negative, then positive. So it's opposite. Uh, we can go ahead and go through the test, but the opposite. Okay, we, we need to list three different things. So what's the first thing? Okay, so concave up, con count, when is it concave up? <laughs> That's what you meant, right? So we say from union 1 to infinity, we say concave down, negative infinity to negative 1, union 0 to 1. And then we have to state the points of inflection. So inflection point at, there's three of them right? Negative one comma something, zero comma something, one comma something. Oops. But we know zero is comma what? Zero. zero. Uh, let's plug in one for positive one. So positive of one, three minus ten plus forty-five. Negative what? Thirty-eight. So that means no. Positive 38. You did this one? Well, wait a second. 
Wait a second, negative 77. Yeah, so positive 38. So this guy would have to be negative because it's symmetrical about the origin. Oh, sorry. That's why. Okay. All right. Finally, we can get to the last part, which is drawing it. Sketch. Okay, obviously, you weren't writing any notes. Okay. So this is going to be highly not to scale. 38, negative 38. Okay, so let's put in our intercept. Our inflection point, I'm going to label it as an inflection point. An inflection point. Okay, so now I can use my little graphs. Now it's always increasing, so it's always going to move, be moving up. We know we're concave down. I'm going to use my gray pen. Where's my gray pen? Okay, so it's concave down. I believe it said negative infinity, right? So concave down here, then it's concave up, concave down, concave up, which might help us with our drawing. So we know we're always increasing. So here we have to have concave down, concave up, concave down. Oh, that was bad. Try that again. Oh. There you go. There's our graph. Cool, hey? It's it a it's no, it's an a reflection in the origin, which is like an hundred and this is a rotate hundred and eighty degrees. So it'll be the same. Okay, all right, it's a very special type of reflection. Okay. Yeah, the graph that it gave me is wrong then. Well, no. No, it's not. Your windows aren't the greatest. My windows are amazing. Look at them. No. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the next question and then we're done. Yeah, the wind, this is ugly. Your graph, see? Graph calculator's not the greatest. Okay. Oh, wait a second. Oh, good. Okay, this guy will be a little bit more interesting. Start with domain. What's the domain of this graph? Guys? going on? Okay, domain. Cody, what is it? Okay, so how do we write that in interval notation? Okay, so can't be equal to negative four. Next, intercept. Let's start with the y. Okay, so y-intercept would be negative 1. So it's plugging in negative 4 divided by positive 4 gives you negative 1. x-intercept, we have 0 equals x minus 4 over x plus 4. What would it be? So this we can get rid of, right, times both sides by that. So when is our numerator equal to 0? When x is 4. Why are I did this is X. Right? No? Oh, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Y intercept is when X is zero. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. We're, we got it. Oh. I never said this week. I'm putting melt words in my mouth. 
Okay, y-intercept, x is 0, y is negative 1. So this would be x is 4, y is 0. There you go. What's going on? I don't think you guys deserve cake. Symmetry. Did we do symmetry? No. Okay, uh, would there be symmetry? So let's try this f of negative x, negative x minus 4 over negative x plus 4. Is there any way we can make that look like the original function? If I take out a negative, would that do anything for us? It wouldn't. Because the numerator would then become x plus 4, the bottom x minus 4. So therefore, no symmetry. We can't make it look like the original. Even if we factor out a negative? Okay, D is our asymptotes. Are we going to have any asymptotes here? Okay, let's start with a vertical asymptote. Do we have a ver vertical asymptote? Guys, you're gonna, I'm going to ask you to leave. It's disruptive to everybody around you. Okay, at, how do we know this? How do we know? So we, we first step test vertical, then we'll go to horizontal. So we know we have a vertical asymptote because we have a fraction. And it's whatever makes our denominator zero. So in this case, it has to be x equals negative 4. So vertical asymptotes are always when our denominator equals zero. So what do we have to do with that guy? Limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left. And then x approaches negative 4 from the right. So left of negative 4, negative 4.0001. We're good? Okay. So uh, if I have my original function, what would it give me on top? Negative 4.0001. It's just a negative number, negative 8 actually. And then what would it give me on the bottom? A really small negative. negative. So if we have a negative over a small negative, what will it approach? Big numbers. Like billions. Okay. <laughs> negative 4 from the right. So now from the right is negative 3.999 so still a negative over a small positive which gives us really really big negative number or really really small no okay uh finally we're at first derivative right yes oh thank you horizontal Ugh, silly me Silly me. Horizontal asymptote. Well, we have so that's vertical. Next, horizontal. Okay, horizontal asymptote. So the limit as x approaches infinity, f of x, positive or negative infinity. I guess we can write plus or minus. Okay, will we have a horizontal asymptote? So what about when the degree on top equals the degree on the bottom? 1 over 1. We take, right, the highest degree, the coefficients of the highest degree. So it's going to be 1 over 1, which equals 1. So it, from both sides, we're going to approach, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote we'd write at y equals 1. In flat, we don't have one because you'd need top degree one more than the bottom. So we're, we're good. We can't have all three. You're always going to... Hmm? No. No, because if it has a slant asymptote, it won't have a horizontal. Because what it would look like... You can have a vertical. So you can have a graph that looks like this. Okay, so that would be... Hmm? 
Um, pretty, yes, yes, there would be. There would be, yep. You would, yeah, there would. Right, exactly. Okay, so next guy. E in the list was integral to increase, decrease. So finally we get to do our first derivative. What do we get to use, do here to do our first derivative? Minus four? Okay. Okay. So first derivative, easiest way to do this. Quotient rule. Okay. Derivative of the top. One times by the bottom. Minus, leave the top times the deriv derivative of the bottom, one, all over bottom squared. This is going to be kind of nice. Eight. So the x's cancel, eight over x plus four squared. Okay, so critical value. Negative four. So the critical values are when our numerator or denominator equals zero. Uh, then positive and negative two. Oh yeah, yeah. If it's plus four, yeah. If it's plus, yeah, it'd be nothing. Yeah, because if nothing would give you a negative. Okay. Um. So in this case. Negative 4, so we're going to do our test. Left of negative 4, negative 5. No matter what, what's it going to be? Positive, because we're squaring it. So positive. And uh, positive 5, I guess. Still positive. So do we have a max or a min? No, we can say, though, that we are. So we have to say when we're increasing or decreasing. So we'd say we're... Increasing negative infinity to negative 4. What is that negative 4, guys? Asymptote. So it's not increasing at the asymptote. It's exactly at it. <laughs> so, uh, no, if it was a 0, then it, if it was a, like, if it was a critical value, you don't include it. Because that's where it's 0 or undefined. So it wouldn't be included in this. Okay, so no math. F. Okay, so max or min, you would say, whoa, that is a heater. Max and mins? None. Okay. G. There is no U-shapes. No lump. Yeah. Okay, uh, G, second derivative. Oh, on ours, but on this list that I, on the question, if you go back to the question, on there. Because they put F as, you can put those together or separate. Okay, so our first concave inflection point, our, our first derivative is 8 over x plus 4 squared. What's the easiest thing to do here to derive this? Put it on the top. Okay, so our second derivative. Negative 16, x plus 4, subtract 1, negative 3, times the derivative of the inside is 1. Or negative 16 over x plus 4 cubed. Okay, so where's my critical value? At 
negative 4, x equals negative 4. Which again is our vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's do a test. Negative 5 would come out negative. So we'd have a negative over a negative positive. Okay, so concave up. We put in positive, I don't know, zero, we can put zero, anything above negative four. So negative over a positive would come out, negative concave down. So we are concave down, negative four to infinity, concave up, negative infinity to negative four. Do we have an inflection point? No, because negative 4 is a asymptote. If it wasn't an asymptote, then it would be. Finally, let's sketch this puppy. <laughs> that would be cool. Okay, so um, what are some of the critical points, guys? Negative 4 is pretty important. We should probably put it on the graph, like this. Sort of like that. Okay, uh, what else is important? One, x equals one, or y equals one, thank you. It's another asymptote, y equals one. Okay, from the left of negative 4, what did it approach? The left of negative 4 approached positive infinity, so we know that's going to be like that. From the right of negative 4, it was approaching negative infinity. Let's use red. Okay, so that gives us some idea what's going on. Do we know any points? Yeah? Okay, y-intercept is 0 and negative 1. So negative 1 down here. Okay, we also know x-intercept at four. Okay, we know uh, as far as increasing goes, we are always increasing, except for at negative 4. Concave up, concave down. I'm just going to kind of sketch those in to help me. So it says concave up until negative 4, and then we're always concave down otherwise. So concave up. I'm going to approach our asymptote here. And then concave down. Oh. And make my intercept. And it's approaching my asymptote here. Pretty basic, actually. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Are you really close with that? Um, on the test, I will say this list. Okay. So homework is finally, we're done. Page 240, just 2, 4, 6, and 8. <laughs> well, if you open up, it's, well, it's, yeah, you're right. They take a long time to do, don't they? Ugh, Greg. I'll do at least one, let's say. Look at all that work. 240. So yeah, all you, it's two, four, six, eight. So you have to do this for four equations. Some of them are really easy. No, because we already did one and three. Yeah. Okay, do one. Yeah, let's say if you did number. The rest you can do for homework, but if you finish this one in class, let's say number 
What what number is this? Two forty. He finished number five. Oh no, wrong one. Six. Finished number six. He finished number six. You can go.